Ma, where you at with my kids? My mother took my kids for me so I could get dressed slowly. And I still didn't, I still had a whole bunch of other stuff to do and I still didn't get dressed the way I wanted to. That's another story for another day, Ma. Yes, on time. Hey. Okay, so you have to write something, Kristen, so that I can request you to join. Oh. I hope we have great connection tonight. Look at you. We are on time. On time. Yes, on time you look beautiful. Today. Thank you. Can you see me? I think the light is too bright. Hold on. It's too you. light. It's really, really bright. It's blinding me. I need to come closer. It's giving I can't glow. See. It's giving it glow. is? Okay, then it's doing its job then. Well, everybody say hi to Kristen. Everybody wave in the hi. comment section so she can see everybody waving to her. We have Kristen here tonight with us. So we're going to chat. I haven't seen Kristen in about, how long has it been since I've seen you? Girl. Are we counting the gram or no? <laughs> oh, well, no, we're not counting that. I think maybe it's okay. been about, maybe like four years. It had to be about four. I think it's been no, about it four homecoming. years. I saw you on homecoming. Like, I know it wasn't four years ago, was it? Mm hmm. It was. It's been four years. Mm -hmm. It's definitely been four because then I was pregnant. My son is one. Yep, it's been about four years, about four years in total. So I just wanted everybody to kind of get an idea of who you are. You can just introduce yourself, where you're from. Now, okay. Hey, guys, I'm Kristen. I am in D.C. now. I went to Morgan State University um, with Simone, with Glow here. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and now I have um, an online clothing business which is very cute, very trendy pieces. I don't think you can see my top. Yeah. Let me see. Turn around. Let me see the back of it. <laughs> so crazy. <laughs> what made you want to go to Morgan, though? Because you're, you're from originally from D.C., correct? So originally from Connecticut, but I've been in the DMV area since I was little. Um, Are you from D.C., girl? Girl, honestly, I didn't want to go to Morgan. I'm going to be honest. Why? I didn't want to go to more. I wanted to go down south. I wanted that, like, down south experience, like that HBCU real experience. And somehow, I ended up in Morgan. And then you went to school for fashion merchandising, correct? That was my minor at Morgan. Yep, it was. Mm -hmm. And what was your major there? Um, family and consumer science. So it was like a general major. I never even knew they had fashion merchandising there until you told me that when I saw you on campus. You was like, yeah, I must go to my sewing class. I said, we got sewing in here? I didn't Girl. even know we had sewing. Right, yeah. It wasn't that. I know it wasn't a school for that. I know we were basically known for our engineers and our business majors there. But I think I just used to see you around campus, and I used to run into you. You're one of the few girls from D.C. that I spoke to because everybody I talked to was from New York. Yeah, yeah. I, I was, was really biased. I was <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Did you live in the dorm at Morgan? Did you live at Brown or no? So I did freshman year. Um, okay. And then after freshman year, I was off campus. So see there, there we go. See, I don't know. Like everybody that was from New York, we all kind of like met each other at freshman orientation. Did you go to the uh, freshman orientation? Yeah, I'm sure. I don't remember, but I'm sure I was there. <laughs> yeah, I think everybody kind of like made their little clicks at freshman orientation. And then nobody <laughs> saw each other ever, ever again. So right. discuss like uh so you also are a lash tech. We gotta pump all the businesses that you do. We gotta pump it all because I do have some friends in the DMV area. Hey ladies, come see me. So yes, I do lash extensions. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what is the lash extension company called? It's called I Fetch. The letter so, I Fetch. I'm gonna type in your website right now for shop I Fetish. That's for the clothing line, correct? Yep. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna do it right now so everybody can Go ahead and look at the website. Check out our merchandise. We have new stuff coming in. Fall stuff will be coming in shortly. The summer is just about over. We never really had a chance. We, we, we never had a chance. We really I'm didn't talking. have anything. <laughs> so where did the idea come from for Shop Eye Fetish? Um, the idea came from Eye Fetish. So, you know, I do lashes, and I was kind of on the road with my girl to Philly one day. And I was mm -hmm. like, I need a name for my lash business. So we're like throwing names out. We're like 
Googling synonyms for words, like what, you know, trying to be creative, but we're off the wall. So I wanted to make it super simple. So I fetish is the lash business and I didn't want anything, you know, too far off from that. So it just became shop I fetish. So it's I fetish so, LLC. So where do you get the concept of your clothes? Because like your clothes don't look like anybody else's clothes and it's affordable. So, like, you know how you see, like, a lot of people have, like, they shop from, like, the same vendors. So, you see, like, a lot of companies mimicking the same type of style. I haven't seen any of the items that you have on any other website. Like, Fashion Nova, no. Pretty Little Things, no. I haven't seen any item that you have. So, are you handpicking these items? I am. So, I basically do it based on my style. Like, what I want to wear. Um, and then, obviously, what I think is going to sell. I think with Fashion Nova and Pretty Little Things, they're such a huge, they're both huge companies. So, you know, they may have something, but before you can even get to it, it's probably sold out. And me, it's just, it's just me. So who's your style inspiration icon? Like, who, who, who can you say inspired your style? Mm, that's a good question. I'm not ready for that one. Wait a minute. I think, I honestly think it depends on me. It, feel, it depends on my vibe. It depends on how I feel. Like, some days I want to dress down or throw, uh-oh, what's going on here? Okay. Some days I want to, like, maybe put a dress on and some tennis shoes, you know? And then some days I may want to put some heels on. Or, you know, I, I don't know. I don't really, I can't really say I have a style icon. I think the reason why I asked you that is because, again, I met you in freshman year at Morgan. And so, you know, everybody in D.C. wore black. <laughs> you know what I mean? Everybody wore D.C. Sis, I was black. I was colorful at school. Oh, my goodness. I was, I was out there experimenting with things. It, Everybody wore black. All the guys wore black, and all the guys had rubber bands at the bottom of their pants. I was like, "What is going on? What did I step into? Why does everybody wear black and have these little combat boots on, these hats on? Like, what is going on out here?" Yeah, that so, was the trend then. I didn't. I'm not like I said. I'm not from DC, so like I didn't necessarily have like their style. Why does my light keep going dark? This is new for me. What am I doing wrong? I don't know. I don't know what ring you got. <laughs> No, I'm talking about the phone. The phone keeps going dark. Okay. Oh, it might be a connection. I was having an issue last last week oh, on my okay. on the live. It could be the it could be the internet connection with it. Okay. So explain the reality of being like a female entrepreneur because this is your baby, right? It's, like you. <laughs> yes, it's definitely my baby. Sorry, go ahead. So you birthed this, and so what is what is the reality of being a female entrepreneur? Because you got to stay on top of it and be consistent in order for your business to really boom. Jesus. It's hard. It's really, really hard. Like I came from working in an office job and, you know, I'm there, I'm clocking in, I'm doing my job and then I'm rolling out. With this, it's different. It's, I'm not clocking in. Like, you know, I'm, I'm on 24-7. I may get an idea at 11, 12 o'clock at night and like I want to post it or, you know, I want to do something. I, I got to get up. I got to do the research. I got to write it down so I don't forget it. So it's super hard. You got to stay consistent. There are days where I don't feel like doing it at all. Like, I don't, I don't even, I don't even want to get on the gram. But social media now is what's selling. Like everybody's on social media. Like this is how people are getting rich. These these youngins out here getting rich. And so this is kind of like a new, a new era for me. Like me coming from being super private and my page yes. is <laughs> private. And like, let me tell you, I used to be super private. And then I was like, okay, you know, I'm feeling like. Like, I want to be free today. Let me make my page public. And then I go around and make my page public. And then, like, a week later or not even a week later, I'm like, I don't want to be public no more. And all these people that just follow me that I don't know, I'm about to block them. This is before we had the, the unfollow feature. I'm right. I'm about to block them because I don't want them in my business. Even though I'm not even posting anything. I'm not doing anything. But I'm like, who, is this? who are these people that want to look at my page? But clearly now we know that's what sells. You, people sell. People whatever. sell. Yeah, like. You have to be really transparent. People want to buy things from people that they can relate to. Like, if you buy something or you wear something, oh, I got that. Like, it's never been a time that you could go ahead and say, oh, yeah, I have that. And so there you go, building that bond. This is how you build your customer brand. This is, oh, she's just like me. I want to shop and buy her stuff, but she's just like me. It's a, it's a lot, you know what I mean? People think that I'm very open, but I'm really not that open. It's very strategic. I show everything and then I show nothing at all at the same time. It's definitely a skill and you are definitely private. That's why I'm so happy you said yes. When I asked you, you was like, sure. I was like, for real? You gonna come on here? Girl, I'm, I don't know where that came from. I must have been. You was like, sure. I was like, I had a cocktail that day and was like, okay, sis, let me do it. And the next time I was like, what the hell did I sign up for? Well, can I come? 
Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I don't think they're gonna stop it. So, are you still working your office job, or have you completely like you're done with that? I left in December. Really? Congratulations, I, girl! After eleven years, I decided to leave in December, and um, I was just like, "Hey." Let's figure it what out. What made you just want to do that? Because, I mean, although your business is, like, it's still, it's booming, and it's still in the beginning, beginning <laughs> stages. Exactly. So what made you just want to go ahead and step out, like, on a leap of faith? Basically, that's what you are, right? Yeah, I felt like I was treating my businesses like hobbies. Um, okay. And I wasn't happy at my job. Like, there wasn't a lot of room for growth. So after being there for 11 years, it was, like, in order to actually – like, go hard with this. Like, I need to leave my job. And at that point, there's no turning back. Like, me, I knew I always had a check that was coming. You know, every two weeks, I'm still going to get paid whether I'm promoting my business or not. And now, it's like, I have to go hard. Like, there's no other way. I have bills. I got a mortgage. You know, I, I got things that have to get paid. And now I can't. I have to market myself. I have to go out there. I have to get my people. I have to email. I have to keep buying merchandise. Before I made my merchandise, and then I may not buy it for another three months. And I'm just like, ah, I'll get to it. Now it's like, oh, no, you need your clients. Like, you need to push. You need to buy stuff. People are depending on you. So, and it's definitely hard because when I slacked off, it felt like starting all over again. You know, just like trying to reach the people, trying to reach my customers and stuff. So, Do you like being your own boss? I love it. Nobody I in the area telling you what to do, what's how to go to lunch. Did you come back from lunch? Did you finish this? Did you finish that, girl? Let me tell you, I had a client yesterday, and then um, I met up with my cousin, and we went to lunch. And I was able to have a nice cocktail. We're sitting on the water. I'm like, this is amazing. Like, I mean, I've been doing it, but to actually take it in, like, I'm my own boss. I set my own schedule. Um, it, it, it feels really good. It really, really feels good. I love it. What tools from your upbringing, like, inspired you, like, gave you that entrepreneurial spirit? Like, what made you just want to go ahead and just step out? Like, anything from your upbringing, family um, members? My mom pushing. was always a, a hustler. Always, right. always. Like, you know, growing up, it was she and I at a young age, and I saw her just grinding, like, always. Full-time, part-time, like, you know, she did what she had to do. And then my grandmother, my grandmother, she has six kids. And to this day, you know... She's like working for people, not because she has to, but because she doesn't want to be in the house bored. And it's like, mm. lady, can you sit down? Like, can you chill out? But I mean, I think, you know, my grandmother, she's Jamaican. So I think it's just in our blood to just, to just, <laughs> but I mean, even prior to, to leaving my office job, I was working seven days a week because I was still focusing on my two businesses, doing lashes and then the clothing line. Um, and then finally I was just like, Let's leave. You're not happy. Let's go. So what made you want to do lashes, though? I mean... No. I got my lashes done one time. One time. And I was like, hmm, I think I could do this. Like, I think being in, like, the arts fields has always been something um, that I like doing. Whether it was interior decorating or, you know, fashion clothes. And I felt like lashes was just another aspect of it. And then when I saw how much money you can make... <laughs> I was just like, okay, sign me up. Are you guys still doing lashes right now? Are you guys open back for business? We or... are. Yeah, we're okay. back now. We are. So what's your overall goal that you want to achieve with, like, all your businesses as of right now? Um, obviously, it's, it's still new. I want to keep growing, hopefully, um, gain a lot more customers. But I would just like to open up, um, what's the word? Just like a like a studio, like a boutique, like a beauty parlor almost, like a one stop shop where you can come in, get, you know, your makeup, your lashes, whatever done, and you can shop. Oh, a out. beauty bar. Yeah, that's nice. A beauty bar. That'd be nice. That'd be really nice. Yeah, like I a mean concept store. Like a just like super small and you know, so you still feel like you're getting that personalized experience. But I mean I love being able to shop and not have to go to different places and get dolled up. I'm trying to think. I've seen that somewhere, but I think it was on TV. Like, it was, like, on TV. Like, they went in to get dressed, but as they were getting dressed, they got dressed at the place and got their makeup done. Like, they got ready exactly. inside the space. Like, they like, didn't go to the shop. They went to, yeah. Ready to go. Exactly. Yeah, like, they went and got ready, had drinks and everything, and then they went out. I don't know. What, what was I 
I looking at? I have no idea. I watch so much goddamn TV. I have no idea what the hell I'm watching. You're going to be looking at me soon. It's coming. <laughs> so have you chased, faced any challenges thus far? Absolutely. Um, absolutely. COVID hit three months after me leaving my job. And it was just like, what the hell am I supposed to do now? Like, everything shut down. And so obviously, I doubted myself. I felt like, okay, did I make the wrong decision? You know, I have a degree, so I can always go get a job. But I kind of sat back. And, um, you know, I just, I just kind of had to think and kind of like, tune into myself and figure out what it is I want to do. Because obviously, you know, I don't have that job, but I have this extra freedom and I love doing what I do. So who doesn't like to get dolled up? Who doesn't like, like to get first dibs on clothes when they come in? I'm like, oh, no, I'm gonna say this for my clients. <laughs> you know, so. I think freedom is definitely something that a lot of us nine to five, because I'm still working my nine to five, but you know, I guess I'm working my nine to five for my health insurance because it's definitely not for me. I can't stand this job. <laughs> I can't stand this job. And I say, I look at these kids every day. I'm like, if y'all wasn't here, I would have been left this place. It, I think it drains you. You get tired of, I guess, working for someone else's dream. Mm -hmm. And that's basically what you're doing when you're working for somebody. And that's no shade to anybody that's working out here, working a nine to five. You have to do what you have to do. And when you get enough confidence to kind of like just branch out on your own you absolutely can go ahead and do that mm -hmm. so i have this other question i wanted to ask you so i've asked like my women guests because i haven't gotten any real women on my show so i feel like my best friend she came on and like it's been like scouting trying to like get women to come on in girls are like no nah, it's okay i feel uncomfortable i don't want to be on Look, the live but wasn't that me <laughs> you said sure but you said sure but then yeah, like but a few how many and that's, that's normal you, like, that's normal because, see, the thing is, the thing with the live is, it's just really me and you, although the comment section is going, it's really like a FaceTime. Like, it's a FaceTime. Like, I, that's how I treat it. Like, it's FaceTime. Because I can only see you, and I, I block out whatever somebody is writing, unless somebody say something crazy. And, and that hasn't happened. That hasn't happened here. So, thank God. Um, so, how important is it that Black women create a space for themselves in all areas of the work industry? Because you're creating a space for yourself. You're your own boss. I think it's extremely important, especially like what's going on now, the world we live in now, and people being more vocal about, you know, black lives not mattering. Right. <laughs> like, I think it's extremely important that we continue to support each other and go hard and, um, yeah, just, just create a space for us, you know, because we are very talented. So you already answered this question, but... You said COVID, like COVID happened three months after you quit your job. Where were you when you heard the news? <laughs> hmm. um, where was I? Clearly not at work. Um, I was actually working in a salon in Bethesda, if I'm not mistaken, doing lashes. And um, I think, I don't know. Honestly, I don't know where the heck I was. But I just knew I wasn't trying to catch it. So I was just like, eh. We about to shut stuff down right now. <laughs> when you first heard of it, like I know, like the like COVID was brewing. Like everyone heard it. Like I remember, I was like, it looked like a masquerade ball out here in New York City because everybody had a mask on. People were like wrapping whatever they could find around their faces at first, and then I was just like, I don't know if it's gonna be that bad. I thought we was gonna get. I thought it was gonna be like the swine flu, honestly, oh. and then. It got real, and it got real too real too fast, too and I quick, was just like, right? mm -hmm. I was like, oh crap! Like, what are we gonna do? I remember calling my job every five minutes, like, oh, so when are we closing? When are we closing? I would like to know when are we closing. Like, I'm texting the guy, like, what time are we closing? When are we gonna close? They were like, we don't know, we don't know anything yet. I'm like, we don't even have an emergency plan as to what to do. So, how are you gonna protect your business? being as though COVID has happened in the future. Like, we already know things like this can happen. See, no one has ever known of a disease that shut the world down, not in our era. Mm -hmm. So what precautions are you taking for your businesses moving forward to make sure that you're not impacted by COVID? Or like any, any other pandemic that may, may occur moving forward? That's because um, online is where it's at. Because I think, honestly, we all have to go digital. Like, everything needs to be digital. 
Yeah, you can't get Period. your life. But I am coming out with um, a, a strip line. So, you know, my, my clothing, the boutique, that's online. So that doesn't affect me in that sense, um, except for the mail. That I was about to say, what about the orders and things like that? The mail has been a struggle. I mean, the post office never closed. But right now, you know, there are delays with shipping, which sucks. Um, it's out of our hands. You've seen the stuff on the news, how they're taking out these sorters and taking out these mailboxes and all this other nonsense. So... I don't know. We we, we got to cross that bridge when we get there at this point because th that's out of my hands. Um, but as far as lashes, I have strips. I have other items that are coming out to where you don't have to personally come in and see me because if we get another pandemic like this happening, trust and believe I'm shutting my doors down. Like, I, I, I'm, <laughs> not with that. I'm sorry. Not like permanently, but I ain't messing with that. Until we get the clear, you know, my doors will be shut. So I know you were out there protesting in D.C., Right? I saw you with your sign. I saw you out there. I saw you. How do you feel? No, no. So I said, I saw you out there protesting in D.C. How do you feel about racism and, and injustice, you know, that Black Americans are facing right now? It's, it's 2020, and I really can't believe that a lot, of this, a lot of these things are really happening. What made you want to go out there and protest as well? Um, Mid-COVID at that. Mid-COVID. Exactly. <laughs> Mid-COVID. I have an 11 year old brother. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of where where it came from for me because, you know, I can't imagine him going through that, you know, and then he's so innocent. And so to be able to experience that, like, I, I just pray that that, you know, never happens to him. But I don't know, I just I think it's sad. It's sad that we are in 2020 and people feel this way. And we're at a point to where, um, like, we're still fighting, and people are being very vocal about it now. You know, people have been racist, but now they are just coming out here. They are extremely vocal, and it's scary. It's sad. Um, I don't know. So I went out there a couple times, a few times, more than a few times, several times, you know? <laughs> I'm like, oh, hell no. Like, I mean, it, it's just crazy. It's sad. What was the energy like out there while you were protesting? Like, what did it feel um, like? Um, inclusive. I think everybody kind of had the same goal. You know, everybody felt the same thing and everybody was out there for the same reason. So it was really a good energy. Like people came together, you would, you would walk down there and people were giving out free food and free water and free snacks. Like these were on some of the hottest days, you know, and people were just, super sweet, like just giving out stuff to replenish yourself because they know we were out there and we were out there for a while. How long were you guys out there for? Hours. Like people were out there for days. Some people camped out. I didn't camp out, but <laughs> <laughs> they, they were, I'll be back tomorrow. <laughs> I'll right, be back tomorrow. Right. Like, okay, I'm tired now. I mean, I'll see y'all tomorrow. But I mean, you know, people went out there at different times. Um, some people are out there for hours. I walk down there. I rode my bikes down there. Um, yeah. So what are you telling your brother right now? I mean, is he, like, how is, how is he holding up? Because this, like, affected the children. Like, I could stay at home for the rest. I don't care. My house is very comfortable, you know, so. Well, now, that, like, what you mean, like, with COVID and everything? With COVID, with everything that was happening with the racism and Black people, Black men, as a matter of fact, you know what I mean? Getting shot down, Breonna Taylor, like, are, like what kind of conversations are you having with So I'm not actually having those conversations. I haven't even talked to my parents about them. I've talked to my parents about the conversations, but I don't, I don't have those conversations with them. I'll leave that up to my parents to have those. Oh, okay. Um, but he's losing his mind, like, with COVID, because clearly I'm not his age, so he doesn't have anybody to play with. Right. <laughs> He's, he's, he's losing it. Like, he's losing it. And I feel so sad for him because, you know, he can't see his friends, can't hang out. So. And I, what is the school year going to look like for the kids next year? It's well, virtual. Really? So all y'all moms, get ready because I know it's going to be crazy. <laughs> My daughter's first semester is going to be digital. Um, She did okay. I think in the beginning when it first happened, it was like, it's going to be a little break. And then March came, and then April came, and then May, yeah. and then June. <laughs> so you like, oh, two weeks. And then they kept extending it. And I was just like, 
you know, laughing at people. Like, <laughs> y'all celebrating y'all birthday in COVID, you know. Who would have ever thought we'd be in August and I'd be sitting up here celebrating my birthday during COVID? Like, what the hell? <laughs> I know, like, you travel a lot. Where is the first place you want to go when this is all over? Um, I don't even know. Like, this just really threw me off. <laughs> COVID has thrown me off. I'm not even thinking about traveling. Like, I, I considered it, but then I'm like, I'm too scared. I'm, I'm really scared. And, you know, everyone's going to had that conversation. Everyone's going to Mexico. So, Tulum. Everybody's in Tulum. I even did like a little, I said, you know what, let me just see what it looks like because the trip to Vegas was $75 round trip. I said, what in the bus is going on here? Is this a Greyhound? $75 round trip for round four trip. days. Was- round trip. I said, I would be scared the entire flight there, back, in the hotel, out of there, everything. I would be petrified. $75. And I know I know people who have traveled, and I mean, I guess they're fine, or at least they didn't tell me that they weren't, you know, but I'm scared. Like, I don't want to be on a plane with that circulated air around people, and they're they're saying, oh, we're leaving the middle seat open, but everyone else is like, no, nah, this is a packed flight, and I understand it's cheap, but I On spirit, I, tucked in like this on a spirit flight, like, you know them flights are so not, small. <laughs> not spirit. Those are that's who had the seventy-five dollar round trip tickets to Vegas. It was spirit. I said, God speed, no, whoever no, is traveling. We that had thought about going on a trip. We like were ready to go out. And me and my homegirls were like, We're gonna go on a trip, we're gonna go to Miami. As soon as we were getting ready to take that leap of faith, they were like, We're shutting down Miami. We were like, damn. I said, I think we have to sit still for right now. Like that's the best thing we can possibly do is just stay still. Please I think stay that's still. The Mexico, they're going to be... Tulum! They're going to be... Tulum! Safe. It's 350 round trip inclusive. I even looked at it like, I just want to see what it looked like. It's $350. Don't get, Don't get me started because just how I said yes to this live, you're going to see me out there. <laughs> Do <laughs> not. I'll be like, Krista, are you serious? Are you, you better take a COVID test and you come back, girl. Don't go out there. Everybody's in Tulum having the time of their life and coming back to the... the Listen, I feel like we should all just stay digital for a little while. Just stay calm. If we stay calm, if we stay calm, we'll be okay. And then, you know, maybe next summer we can have a Tulum summer. But right now, I think I'm going to just sit here and chill and go to local things, go to local beaches and social distance, do that. So I wanted to ask you, because you do have a small business. Right now it's small, but it's going to be big, real big, real soon. Because we're going to put it out in the universe. We're going to put it out there in the universe. Big business, yes. This is going to be a chain. It's going to be a whole bunch of different things coming from this. How important is it right now in this moment that we continue to support black businesses? Please support me, guys. Please, I'm (laughs) counting on you. (laughs) Please don't give up on us. No, um, it's extremely important. It's extremely important. Like, you see how much money um, Amazon is making just during this COVID? Like, don't let the black businesses, the small businesses die out, y'all, because y'all going to need us when the world opens back up. We're going to wish we were here. So continue to support small businesses, please, please. We're counting on you. So I always ask all my guests to leave a gym. And before I ask you to leave the gym, I'm going to let you think about the gym that you want to drop on everybody. Oh, so and- my mom. <laughs> you got to. You got you got gyms for days, even if it's a slick gym. Yes, you do. If if you ever got into an argument with somebody and you let that go off like that, that was a gym you dropped. Like that was that was a, a mic drop. We, we, let's change the subject on that one. Hold on now. <laughs> because you got a gym. Everything is a gym. You gave you gave a gym, but you got to give another one. You already gave a gym. You already gave one earlier, so you got to give another one before you leave. Because I can't my, let what you was leave. My earlier gym. You was talking about. It was all the way here. Let me go back. Because I got my little cards here. Hold on. Hold on. I need some of those. You should have you mailed me some. I'm going to mail you some. It's me, girl. It's me. It's me on my face. I'm messing with you. <laughs> so you said about taking the leap of faith when you left your job. You dropped the gym. You said, all I have is me. So I only have me to depend on. Right. So you've had the freedom of working on your own. So you got a, that was a, you gave like a, a, a light gym. They a light gym. gym. No, you got to give another one, Krista, before you leave. Okay. You can't um, be like I this. Say, I will say, um, 
Um, let's see. Don't count yourself out. Whatever, whatever it is that you're pursuing, continue to go hard because you may not see those results right away. Like, there's so many times I wanted to give up on the lashes because I doubted myself. I was like, okay, this isn't working. This doesn't look like the pictures that I saw. Like, this isn't, I'm a perfectionist. So I wanted to give up many a times, many, many, many times. I just say, keep going. Whatever you start, finish. Because if you, if you stop and then you decide to come back and do it again, you're going to be starting all over. You're going backwards. Just, just keep going. Keep pushing. And what keeps you going? Girl, my name. <laughs> What keeps you going? What keeps you going every day? I think my support system. My support system really keeps me going. Um, definitely have a strong support system. Um, I'm, you can't force a support system, but my support system, they, they really, they back me up. They go hard. Like, if I don't post on Instagram, they may hit me up like, hey, where you at? I ain't seen you today. Like, don't forget to post your stuff, you know? Um I don't know. They, they're just very encouraging. They support me. Um, so besides buying your stuff, what can we do to help you and your brand? Post it. Post. Buy post from me. it. Buy. Um, post me. Gift cards. I have gift cards available on the website. You can buy for someone Ooh, else. Oh, that's cute. Gift cards. Gift cards, whether it's lashes, whether it's clothes. Um, just, just don't forget about me. Shop at Finish. <laughs> <laughs> so what else other future projects do you have in store right now in the work? I know you said you wanted to do the beauty bar, but what else did you want to do? Or what else do you have in the works right now besides the business and the eyelashes? Or what else can we look out for? That's that's it. Right now, that's what's in the works. Just me being more consistent um, and just building my brand. So that's what okay. I'm working on now. I don't want to put too much on my plate. And if I okay. did have something coming up, uh, we'll launch you guys to wait until the game. Okay, so... <laughs> <laughs> Would you prefer everybody follow your regular page or your clothing page? Follow because they're going to follow you. They're going to follow you. Follow they're going to follow you. And you're going to see all my stuff on there anyway. So KG16, if you want to see only clothes, you can go on shop, the letter I, fetish. Um, and that's also my website, shopifetish.com. So you can follow all pages. I have three pages. It's hard. Oh, I, I know, I know, I know. I want to thank you again. I want everybody to give her a round of applause in the comment section, please, because she was not trying to come on here. <laughs> she was not. And I do appreciate it. I just want to do my part, if I can, to shed some light on the people that I know to come and support you. If we can support you, I support you. I definitely have a pair of her shoes that I bought that I didn't get a chance to wear until this year, and they are very comfortable. So you do have what do you have on the website besides clothes? You have clothes and you have shoes, right? Clothes, shoes. Um, I think I have like one style bathing suit left for the season. I have accessories. Um, yeah, just I got everything on there. Okay, so, so we have a variety of things on the website. So if you want to get shoes, you want, and what is the price point for all the clothing and what's the size? Price and size. So um, right now, sizes are anywhere from an extra small to like an XL. I'm working on getting some plus sizes in. I have a lot of my curvy girls reaching out like, you got some cute items, but I can't fit it. Your stuff is tiny. So I have some stuff coming for you ladies. Just be patient with me. It's coming. Okay. And what is the price point for the clothing? It's very reasonable. Um, I would say my stuff is anywhere from like 30 bucks to maybe 80 bucks on a high note. Okay. Um, just depending on you know, what it is. Obviously, in fall, you know, with coats and sweaters, the prices are going to get a little bit more, you know, expensive. But, yeah. And so, when can we expect to see some of the fall items? Soon? Next week? Two weeks from now? Keep us posted. I mean, when, when are y'all ready? When do you think y'all ready for the fall stuff? Because it's still Girl, hot. we can go outside. <laughs> it's, it's still hot. Uh, I got some sweaters over here right now. They're super cute, but I'm like, it's too daggone hot that he posted some sweaters. Although, it's coming. It's coming. Give me like September. Like, you, I think August is when everything kind of sets. August is when everything rolls out really for sale. the fall. So look yeah, out for some sale. sale items. I'll be um, marking some things down on sale, some summer stuff. And then, yeah, the, the, fall, the fall items will be coming, like, probably within the next two weeks, maybe sooner. Okay, well, I thank you so much for coming on tonight. <laughs>
Thank you. I do appreciate it. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in tonight. And if you want the video, I can send it to you so you can have it, okay? Yeah, of course. Send it to me. I appreciate you. Thank you for Thank getting you. out of my shell. This was your first live. I, I'm so happy that I popped the cherry. I'm so happy that Thanks, I was able girl. to do that. Thanks. I hope you enjoyed it, okay? Thank you so much, Kristen. All right, babe. Thank you. Thanks, guys.